We are going to be going inside the newly renovated Sultan Ahmed. Six years we've been waiting to see what this great palace of Ibadah looks like after significant renovations. Who was Sultan Ahmed from the Islamic context? Who was he inside himself and why did he commission this epic piece of Ottoman architecture? On my tour, I was joined by Muslim guides and historians who revealed secrets of the Sultan as a believer and some secrets inside the building itself. Now, Sultan Ahmed, he has a bad reputation and one has to remember that he comes into power. He comes at the throne at a very young age and he comes into power when the, when the Ottomans are facing numerous rebellions, wars on two fronts, one against the Austrians in the West and one against the Saf Safavids or the Safawiya in the east, the Persians in the east. And when Sultan Ahmed comes onto the throne, he's following in the footsteps of great rulers of his forefathers, people of the likes of Osman Ghazi, the son of Ertegrul. Many of you will know about Ertegrul. Uh, uh, um, uh, the son of Osman Ghazi, Orhan Ghazi. And here comes Sultan Ahmed, the 14th in line to the Ottoman throne. And he is very young at the time. He is inexperienced as a provincial government, governor, but he comes into power and he wants to leave his mark. And what does he do? One of the things he does, that he does, despite the fact that the Ottomans in the field of battle are now suffering from defeats, what does he do? He commissions this incredible grand mosque, something that previous rulers had only done following victories and when they achieved these victories they would build these mosques they would commission them through the ghanima or the spoils of war the spoils that were won through these great victories and sultan ahmed does not have these great victories but he digs into the treasury of the ottomans and with that he starts to lay down the foundations of this incredible piece something that he wants to do, not for his own ego, but rather to boost the morale and the ego of the Muslims. What's the purpose of this building? Our ancestors put the uh, purpose of this building, you know, it says, protect your middle prayer. So, so we pray five times, and this is not a museum, this is a, a place of worship. We should enter with respect. So we don't pay money. It's not a museum. And you will, uh, inshallah, see now when we enter the uh, spirituality, the atmosphere, you know, very peaceful. He had a very good spiritual training. Uh, he had a Sufi master called Aziz Mahmoud Hudayi. So he was trained by him. He was a very spiritual person, actually. He was carrying earth with his own gown. Can you imagine put the earth through and kill? Yeah. He earth? was digging, uh, yeah. you know, but you know, a kind of rivaling uh, beauty uh, against the, you know, Christian art because yeah. Hagia Sophia, it was turned into a mosque, but it was a, a, a church, isn't it? Yeah. So kind of people say that Ottomans are trying to, you know, surpass Hagia Sophia, which actually might be true. It's not easy to keep a sense of peace and respect when you're amongst thousands of tourists, most of whom are not aware of Islamic etiquette for going inside the mosque. But I tried to focus on entering a space of worship and on the ihsan and intentions of the great architect who had worked on the project and brought it to the world in just seven years. The tiles all around are indeed a really deep blue. They depict the gardens of paradise and the flowers, the water, the sky and the trees that inshallah we'll all see there. The spiritual atmosphere here really, 
uh, you know, uh, charm you, isn't it? Yeah. Look at this piece. Of course, now a little bit noise around, but normally it's very silent as well. Because the Ottomans built mosques with big gardens. So you don't hear the noise of the town, you know, the noise of the cars. So this is what's known as the Royal Quarter. And this is where the Sultan and his family behind these, uh, the gold uh, railings up there, that's where they'd have done their salah and their worship. And it was a safety uh, issue as well to uh, make, keep them safe, alhamdulillah. But there is a secret here because Sultan Ahmed was also a humble believer and he feared Allah. So behind these gold railings is a, inside the wall is a little space with just some prayer mats and a, and a tap for wudu where he would go into solitary, solitary worship, ihtikaf we call it. Really overwhelming, I think the intricacy of it, that every tile has its certain place. Every piece of glass is this incredible, vibrant blue. The, the amount of calligraphy here that tells you about Allah Ta'ala and the Holy Quran. It's layer upon layer. It's, uh, yeah, it's overwhelming. When the Ottoman Turks built a mosque, they did not limit it only to a place of worship, but rather a kuliya, a large complex of buildings. So the Sultan Ahmed Mosque also included a hospital, a madrasa, which was a higher educational institute, and a soup kitchen to feed the poor. Plus there was a primary school and a market. The shops surrounding the complex still pay rent today towards its upkeep. In Ottoman tradition, the waqf also took care of the poor, the sick, students and even travellers. They would have been looked after in part by these rents. What a beautiful way to sustain Thanks so much. a caring society. Bismillah. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye. We were invited to lunch inside the former kindergarten, which today is now a centre for tourists, where they go to learn more about the mosques and get some facts about Islam. This is a very special place. The, Mr. Suleiman Hojam, he will explain you the okay. story of this building. Allah, who yes. We are enjoying the food now. The, you know, one of the things that we can take from this is the fact that this mosque is the most visited mosque. Look at the people who are coming here. There's Muslims, there's non-Muslims, there's people from this city, there are tourists. They all come here and this place is still sanctified as a place of worship. And I think that alone is proof of enough as to the Nia of this Sultan when he wanted to build this place and he wanted to have people worship here, this was fulfilled by Allah Azza wa Jal. And look at the fadl of Allah in terms of this incredible masjid, how Allah Azza wa Jal not only preserves it for time and for mankind to visit and learn from, but also for them to take in from its beauty and worship Allah. Two great mosques right now, today in modern Turkey, speaking to each other and calling people to come to prayer. It is really, truly epic. <laughs> That's incredible. So what can we take away from this beautiful renovation project and the original project of Sultan Ahmed I 
Well, look around you. It was always a kulia, a center for Islamic life. And today, when we come, let's have a sense of awe and respect because this gem, by the grace of Allah, still exists for prayer and for the people today. If you enjoy these videos, like and subscribe to my channel for more Islamic perspectives on our history. Salaamu Alaikum.